Hey, it's Joe Lines, and uh, in this video, we're going to cover what I've automated this week. It's actually the past couple weeks. I've been busy working on my house. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what I'm sharing right here, this is a script. I'm not going to get into the actual programming of it. It's pretty complex, but I, I want to make sure I, I explain the overall concept and the capability. So to give you a little history, I found on this website, um, there was this mention of, of a data set, and I said, okay, let me go there, and actually you have to have an AWS account to, to log into it. Uh, it's all free, right? But when you get here and you look under this 7.1, you'll see this 27.8 um, gigabyte company full JSON file. So that's a big file. When you actually save that, um, let's see where, it's not that one this one it's it's actually closer to 30 right nearly 30 to over 29 gigs um, and I was like okay how in the world am I gonna process this file because um, it's so large and auto obviously almost even though I have over 29 gigs of RAM um, there's no way auto hotkeys can be able to open that itself um, thankfully uh, I, I asked Mathris for some help and we started looking at the file first we used the file object because I couldn't even open it to look at it right um, I, I guess I could have read the first like 10 lines and looked at it. Uh, the problem with that though was, well, what if the first 10 lines aren't a random sample of the entire file, right? So what I wanted to do was to take a random sample of the file. So what we did was we used the file object and um, told it to seek, first pick a random row and then seek and go to it and then get the next, read the next line. And so that allowed us to go pull random data from this big file. Uh, and then uh, we saw it, we looked at it, it actually needed some parsing because some of the things were crazy. Each line was a complete JSON string in itself, self-contained. So that's what allowed us to, to do this. Otherwise, if it was a normal JSON string, we wouldn't be able to parse it because who knows when it starts and ends. Um, <clears throat> oh, come on. And, uh, Sorry about that. And so we we um, we went through and like th there were several things like uh, uh, the countries they're in, the industries they're in, the um, yeah, the, I think those were the main two. There were a couple more where there were a lot of answer websites and URLs um, for the company that some companies had like fifty eight URLs. Uh, and so we didn't want to lose that data, but each one was its own column. And so when you actually import that into a file, it's a really, really wide file besides being really long. Uh, and of course, at the time, we didn't know how long it was. Uh, so what we did was we, we went through it. We first wrote a script to parse together combine concatenate all of like the industries into one field um, and that way like in excel i could still search in that field and find the words um, it wouldn't be a unique find right it wouldn't be an exact find it would be looking for that wild card value anywhere in that cell but um, this way we didn't lose the data that got it down to the, and then we imported it into a database and let's see is it no it's not that one it's this one no it's not that one it was going that got it down to this file right here so it's four gigs instead of 29 gigs so just doing that alone we dumped it into a uh, uh, mysql uh, database uh, not mysql what is it um, anyway sqlite and uh and then i said okay now let's export from there and let's um let's simplify it let's export first like the united states and then let's export um non-united states and so now i, I dumped them in spss because that's what i like to use for stuff but uh it it created here oh that's funny that uh, boy oh that's a sample i did a random sample um this one is a 1.5 gigabyte non-us export um i thought i had a regular one for the US, but anyway. Uh, so anyway, so we, we, we were able to process with AutoHotkey. This to me was a really great thing, right? 30 gigabyte file, we were able to use AutoHotkey to burn through it. It took, I'd say a couple hours to burn through the, the initial 30 gig, right? I mean, it was it's a lot of data, but um, I was very happy to, that we could actually do it all with AutoHotkey, it was very cool. So, um, and I'll try to remember to put um, this link in case you wanna get download the data yourself. Whoa, hey. Um, and if you're interested in, in getting the data file, the, the one I parsed, um, maybe I can make that available somewhere. But uh, so that was that with that file. The um, This one, this local business search, I was playing with Bing and 
I would demonstrate it. The, their API, you can go and put in and say, I want certain types of companies and where you want to look at them. Um, unfortunately, their their key, the token key, I was able to create a temporary key and test it out for free. And then I, I signed up for it. It's still for free account because um, you can do, I forget how many per day or per month. It's like 10000 a month for free or something. But I can't seem to get it to work. Um, so I'm not going to demonstrate it. And to, you know, it's one of those things. Some sites are great about documenting stuff and some are terrible. And the bigger they get, the, the harder it is for them to be clear and concise and have things working. So anyway, so that was that. Um, there was also this other site that has um, an API. They actually didn't have a really good API as far as the documentation, but um, I was able to look at it. And uh, here are two calls. One is to, uh, it looks at a given domain and then says, hey, look for a given person at that domain. And what I don't like about this is it'll detect a pattern and it just returns back, oh, you know what? Apparently at ti.com, a lot of people just have the first name. So, oh, no matter who, what query you put in there, like I can put, put this and now, let me exit, I don't know what that is. And when I run this, it's gonna come back and say, hey, you know what, we found that email address for you. And it, it I don't really, you know, the odds of it, being the right Joe are just ridiculous. So I, I don't like that type of a um, API call. There it goes. Email found for this domain. Yeah, success. Joe at TI, right? And that did happen to be my email address when I was there, um, or one of them, because I changed it. Uh, actually, when I first started, it was my last name. And that's the thing. It's like, this would have been wrong in the first place. Um, the guy that owned, or had a joe at ti.com left ti and then someone told me like hey you can get that and switch your email address so i did um so for a while it was mine but that's not normal and again this would just come back and be like oh okay and of course now there's probably a different joe at ti.com so i i didn't like this one this other one the the verifying emails that one did seem to work fine uh it, it verified i used my email address and it'll go and oh what Apparently I got rid of something I shouldn't have. Um, I'm not gonna try to troubleshoot this now, but I um, can't tell a send, it is sending. Oh, that's interesting. That should be down there. How did that happen? That's weird, I don't know. So I just called it, it's doing the call, and you can see it's, it's not exactly burning speed, right? But um, it should come back here. Yeah, there's something weird going on. Oh. oh, there we go. We got data. So it comes back with um, a response. So Joe, user mean Joe, do you mean Joe? Yeah, domain. So the valid format, yes. Found the uh, the MX is the, the, the mail server for that domain. Um, SMP check was true. It's not a catch-all. It's not disposable. It's not free. Um, the score, I think this has to do with how likely it is a good email address. Um, I think that's the time, which is ridiculous. But um, but yeah, you can ping this. Um, so that one wasn't terrible. Uh, this next one I wanted to demonstrate. So let me open up IE and show you. So this is this is a pretty awesome one. Is uh, You can go and get as many um, people. Let's see here, A to Z. So if you, most people, if you go to your local library, um, a lot of times they'll have access to this A to Z database. Right, so you can come in here. You have to have your library card number. You know, let me bring this off the screen so I don't publish that everywhere. I'm gonna log in, and I'm just gonna bring it back on screen now. And let's say I wanted to find um, an advanced search, and I wanted to find in. Let's do, um, you know, let's do Dallas. Texas. Dallas, and then let's look for, ooh, let's look for automation. Where do I type? There it is. Automation or robotics consultants. Oh, very interesting. So let's see, I doubt this will come back with many, um, but you'll get the idea. Yeah, two, yay. Um, perhaps I should revise it and add something else oh you know what it's that's interesting it's adding, uh, offering up a bunch i don't really care right for this purpose 
there we go. This will give us plenty. I guess I could, I didn't realize that there was an update this count here. So now there are, oh wow, there's still only 70. Um, but you can only, if you're using, if you go through manually, you can export, um, I think it's a thousand at a time. But what I didn't like was after you click, like you click this and then go to next and then click it and go to next and then you export a thousand, all of the items stay selected. And so then you have to go back and unselect everything or restart your search. But of course, then you don't know where you are. So what I did was I wrote this script and let's see here, eight to four. Let me talk it through real quickly here. So it's gonna ask what, hey, who are we targeting this way? It's gonna um, give you a file name that's meaningful. That way you know what it is. And, uh, and then we're gonna go to, it, it assumes we're on that first page right this page here and it's going to focus um, it's going to select this all and then hit download and then put in a name that name that i put in there and then it's going to hit customize but hopefully since there's nothing that's been selected it's going to ask me to to fill in some information um so, and then and then it's just going to keep hit next and go actually first it's going to unselect them then hit next and, and do it all this one there, by the way there were some uh event listeners that I had to trigger. Um, so that's what some of these things are for, for um, where is it, for creating the event? Not there. This one, here's a mouse click event. Um, so there were little ones, there was a little tricky here and there, um, but let me see, go ahead and run it. Now actually it's running, but um, I gotta hit my hotkey, so now I'm gonna hit it. What do I wanna call this? Um, automation. I probably, I can't remember. No, it, it 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 does the extension on its own. So now it's selected all, file name. Now see now, hey, I haven't selected anything here because I want to customize it. It's also set to do CSV. I prefer tab, but when I was doing the tab limited, it was coming up with junk data. So I was really pretty bummed about that, but um, fine, I can use, you know, whatever. So I'm just gonna randomly pick some of this stuff, but you can get an idea of like, there's, there's a lot of information in here that you could get, right, on a given businesses. Uh, right, for my purpose, I don't really care. So now I'm gonna hit okay, and it'll continue on. And that's just a one-time thing. So once you do that, it'll remember those settings. And so now it's just plugging along. It's going in, selecting all. Oh, and it did it did the three pages. I, I didn't even get a chance to talk enough. Um, but you saw how fast, it was. imagine if you had 100,000 you know, in your query and it would just keep burning through. Um, and let's see, can I, Control J, I think, opens the. So here are the files it just created. And how. How in the world do I open the folder? Oh. There we go. So. So it created. Oh, that's interesting. Apparently there was a little bit of an issue. Um, I was helping a friend, let's stick with this uh, automation, uh, sorry, the roofers. Uh, so I'll have to look at why, it looks like it wasn't hitting save every time. Um, so did something else, oh, but see, they're, no, no, they're right here. So this is what, oh, it was, it was in the middle of it. So now it saved it. Um, but now I have all these files and if we look at them, um, let me exit out of both of these. If we look at them, each file is similar structure, right? There's a header row, and then there's 25 lines of data. So there's 26 lines in this one. And let me grab a little bit of this and go to the next one. Why is not Explorer there? That's not the right one. 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 Where, where'd my download, did I close it? I didn't think I closed it. I must have closed it accidentally. Come on. All right, so um, that was the first one, and this is the second one. And notice it still has a header in every row. And so if we merge all these together, um, I would have the header multiple times, which not a big deal. I can use Excel and dedupe that. Um, also, by the way, the, the, the simple way is to um, this is a really cool little trick. Let me get back to studio here just to, to be able to type it. Is you, you actually, you know, it's better if I do it right here. I'll just do it live. There's my downloads. Okay. So notice um, there's just the CSV and let's get rid of this automation. So it's all roofers. 
right? So this is all the same structure. Um, I have a hotkey I wrote so I can hit Control Shift P and it's going to open a command prompt in my downloads folder. And I'm going to say, this is a DOS thing, right? I'm going to say copy star.csv and then I'm going to say merged.csv. Now it just combined all of these files appended them for me, right? So this file now has all of those in it, but it has that header row over and over. And even though I love this because it's so easy, it's kind of annoying. I have to then go dedupe it, right? So what I did was I wrote, let's get rid of this one so it doesn't get added back in with the other one. I wrote a little script, so merging similar text files. So this one, it starts off in a, first it gets the the download folders uh the location and it's going to use that so let's let me go ahead and launch it here it's gonna say hey of course start on the other screen where to go where to go so it starts off in my downloads because i put um folder id downloads no sorry that's the wrong line here we go, downloads right here. I stored downloads in the download directory. Um, I, I found this, I can't call it a function, but this bit of code on the forum, um, you can read about it right here. And I, I um, it gets me the downloads folder just to have it as a default, because most of the time that's where the files are downloaded to. And then it says, what files do you want to merge together? Right, so that's what we're doing here. If I hit cancel, it'll watch, it'll just exit, right? User press canceled. And that's what this canceled function I wrote. If we look down here, this is cancel. It passes the name of the variable. And if the variable comes back nothing, it'll just say user press cancel and exits the app. So I'm gonna come back into it. Okay, which ones do I wanna merge? Let's keep it simple. Let's do four, which means there should be 101, right? Cause there's the one header row and then three other files. So that'd be 26 plus the 20, 75, which gives us 101. So when I hit open, um, now it's going to be, what do I want to merge them to? Now this time I have to give an extension. .csv. And it's going to also, after I hit okay, it's going to merge them and then run it. So, okay, bam, open, merge them all together. And notice there's one header. That's it. Was it 101 rows? Just like I had hoped. Um, but super easy, right? Let's, uh, let's close this. Uh, let's. Actually, you know what? That one has 101, so we're going to get, what, 200 and something now? 202, I guess? Um, <laughs> I'm going to come back in here, rerun this. I'm going to select them all. And then twice.csv, just to show you how fast it is, right? So that merged them all together, nice and clean. Um, so, but that, I'm sorry, not 202, because this before I only did four files. This did, let's see, how many files was that? Um, looks like 84 um, files, right? Merged them all together, got rid of the headers. Uh, actually, just skipped over the headers. Let me get back to my code and just, just demonstrate to you a little bit here. Because after we get into it, it's pretty simple. Um, so I go through and get, I use the loop um command and say get all the files in a certain path and then the very first time it goes through that the a index um, so if the a index equals one the first time through the actual a loop field is the directory uh, so that's how this this command works after that everything after that is the actual name of the file and so in order to actually go get that file i have to concatenate the two together here i'm telling it to read it in as a utf8 that's what this part does but um open go open that file um and then read this one sorry this one is reading the whole file because it's a very for even though it's row two remember the first row was the path the second one is going to be the very first file so i want to get the whole thing because i want to include the header after that then i switch over and say hey if it's if it's the first row just skip it just continue don't read it in otherwise um after that it loops over this and reads in the all the data from each row and appends it with the the line return new line at the end um, and then comes up here and just says okay now we got all the data let's you know what do you want to call the data and so i use an input box for that um, again if they hit cancel that's why i wrote this in a function because i use it more than once and like it's just easier and um i wrote a little function which i can jump to here so alt f1 um that goes through and, and if you typed in an illegal character like uh, a backslash a forward slash a colon an asterisk a question mark 
a double quote, the less than, greater than, all these characters are all illegal characters. It'll first replace them with an underscore. And then what I said was like, oh, you know what? I don't want, if it's at either end, if there's a space or an underscore at the very ends, trim either one of those. And so that way it cleans up the file name with whatever people typed. Um, and we don't have to worry about it being illegal and breaking. So that's what is in there. And, um, and that's it. And then just does the file append, saves it. And then this would dump it to the output window, but instead I just run it. Come on, I just run it. Um, I already had the folder path anyway, so I just run that file and that's it. That's what I've been working on. I've done some other stuff, but this was the, at a high level, the fun, fun stuff. Um, hope it was useful to you. Uh, again, just it's, it's more to stimulate ideas than it is about the actual code I did. Um, I can give you this one, the, the other one, um, I don't think I'm going to share the, the, the big data base one, but, um, cause it also needs SQL. We, we dumped it into a SQL uh, database and you need other files and, um, it's just a, a little bit more work on that end, but, um, hope that was fun. Cheers.